welcome to the cooking car show and welcome to the parade and welcome to the homecoming. Y'all ready for the homecoming? Got it. Huh? They not ready. Yes, they you. channel so today I'm gonna to be showing y'all how to make a wig on a sewing machine um I'm kind of in a rush so I'm not going to, I'm not gonna talk in this video I'm just gonna do the voiceover and hopefully it's not too quick for y'all to grasp so uh, I think months ago I, I just did like a recording of the hair so I'm just gonna show y'all that in another clip but you're gonna need a sewing machine you're gonna need what well, I'm using 613 bundles I got this hair from the beauty supply store and then I'm also going I'm, I'm kind of undecided on what cap I'm going to use but I'm either going to use this ventilated cap right here with the paper in the back or this dome cap so I haven't really used a dome I haven't used that one either I've used something similar to that but not like that um so I think I'm gonna give it a try and you're gonna need a marker this is the sharpie oh my god my <laughs> card be quiet this is a sharpie marker you can use use the metallic one so you can, when you mark you can see uh you're going to need some tea pins i got these from hobby lobby if you can't, they have some on Amazon, but I got these from Hobby Lobby. Comb to comb your hair. Alright. And since I got 613 hair, I got some blonde, well, like blonde, real light blonde thread from the beauty supply. And you're also going to need some scissors. And then I'm going to try and keep, use the blonde at the top on top of the hair. And then I'm going to use black thread on the bottom. So in my bobbin, um, it's going to have black thread. But on the top, the top thread, it's going to be blonde. Not this. I'm sewing down my closure with this. But with, how can I say y'all? I'm losing my words. But with the hair, when I put it on the sewing machine, I'm just using all-purpose thread. This is serger thread. So this is polyester, spun polyester. This is the Colts brand. And I got this from Walmart too. Walmart or Joanne Fabric. Either one. Y'all can find it there. And you're going to need some curved needles. I ordered a whole bunch off of Amazon. And I'll link everything below for y'all to go check out. And, you know, all that good stuff. So we finna get started on our week, people. Oh, and if y'all want to know about this hair, this hair is from um, Sonosha Hair. I did a video, probably like two or three videos back. Yeah, y'all can check it out. It's still holding up pretty good. I need to do an update <laughs> on it, but it's holding up pretty good for me. So, yeah, let's get to making this week because I got some somewhere to be later on tonight. Well, I'm going to a parade today, and then I'm going to the homecoming game, so I'm trying to be like belong baby for the homecoming so what are oh, you doing I on the table. Right, let's let's make it sweet so here is my mannequin head y'all it's a size 22 y'all these mannequin heads come in different sizes so normally i use a 23 but today i just decided to use a 22 since my natural hair has been flattened so that kind of takes an inch off of my head and i decided to use the mesh cap i really like mesh caps versus regular spandex caps because it allows more breathability and then i'm just lining up my the lines on the cap with the lines on the mannequin head if y'all can see that so the one in the nape i have the little triangle going in the back and then the ones on the side i just line them up um so yeah this is the closure that came with the hair it's pretty thin it's not as dense as regular closures um, but I, the good thing about it, I don't have to bleach the knots or anything because I'm light skinny. I mean, you can customize it to your preference, but I, I didn't customize it like that. I plucked it at the end, but not that much. And so here I am. I'm just marking the back 
center point of the closure and then the front center point like that lace is going to get cut off so don't even worry about that like i'm just lining everything up so use your mannequin head as a guide y'all and that pretty much helps me and what i'm doing here i'm lining it up on my mannequin head but i'm going to have my closure a little bit ahead of the mesh cap so just pull your closures up a little bit ahead and then pin. I would say make sure you get the front good and then pin in the middle so you can have a good um a good stretch on it and then make sure everything is flat when you're doing it. I had to readjust it. I didn't show it on here, but I had to readjust the closure a bit. So I know it looks like it's pushed back, but I had to readjust it and make sure everything was flat. Normally, that's how my closures are. I just try and get everything as flat as possible. So if you see there, it has no lumps, no humps, no none of that. Everything is laying flat and it's above the mesh cap a little bit. So now I am going to sew down everything. Um, I don't know why I didn't sew this on the machine, but I just sewed it. So here is the stitching. I like to stitch my uh, closures and stuff real close together. Like I like real tight stitching. But you can stitch how loose or you want. Because it's going on a sewing machine. So now I'm just going to braid the hair up. And get it out of the way. So we can start actually working on the sewing machine part. Um, I'm sorry that the video is so. Like it's sped up. But it's not like super sped up. Because the iMovie app only allows me to go like up to a speed of two so i apologize for that so yeah yeah let's just get the hair on out of the way and get started all right so here i'm just pulling down the back nape a little bit just to stretch my cap just a little bit um my like i told y'all i i do not use this cap to make my wigs like this is the first i use it to make hand sewn wigs but not sewing machine wigs but hey it turned out pretty good so here you're going to be making your lines make these lines straight across y'all do not curve those back lines um for a good point of reference like a measurement point use two of your fingers just hold them together and then that should determine how much space you have in between each line um i pretty much just eyeball how i feel but yeah because you're going to be doubling up these tracks i know y'all like girl i can't fit out my hair yes you can i promise you and you're gonna have some hair left over so you're gonna curve when you get to the to the top of your head because you know will not curve too much but you want to just bring those lines around and hit the tip of your closure. Like you're going to get close to your closure. And you're going to see it's going to start looking like really, really weird. <laughs> so um, all the videos I've watched, people are just like they get close to their closure. And some people even leave space in between their closures, like just in case they want to um, change out the closure or the frontal. So for the top part up here, you want to draw straight lines across. Um, yeah, like I said, you want to get kind of close to your closure, but you don't want to sew on top of your closure because just in case you want to replace it, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, those are why I draw those lines like that. I'm not the wig making expert. I just go off how I feel. And here I am showing y'all like how to basically measure in between your lines if you need a good point of measure. This is a bundle this is the longest bundle the 14 inch so here on my machine i am going to be using the stitch setting on four um and i'm just messing around with the length and width of the stitch like you'll see um one side i kind of got frustrated on this sewing machine because i didn't have anything to really hold the serger thread so it kept sna um snapping so what you're gonna do you know how when you double up your tracks how you normally double up when you're doing a regular handmade wig well on the machine you're going to double up your tracks the same way except for you're going to stitch them together so normally when i do this y'all are going to see me re-thread this machine of quite a few times because it kept popping and that's only because i didn't have anything to hold that serger thread down so you want to just stitch it together you want to kind of have your stitch setting on a wider stitch so it can catch and you want to try and hold those tracks together as much as possible to 
so the zigzag stitch will catch it so you're gonna see it gonna, it's gonna look like real nice and neat but it's like it's getting how can i put this it's getting double sewn because you're sewing your tracks together and then on the actual wig you're going to be sewing them down so here's a closer view of me sewing the tracks together y'all so i think on one of these pieces or something like that like i ended up having a gap or something because it didn't catch it but please don't be like that also you want to kind of back stitch um your track you want to back stitch the beginning and the ending y'all see me getting frustrated i'm balling in my fist and whatnot because the thread kept breaking off y'all like it just kept pissing me off and i was just trying to find all kind of solutions to stop it but normally it's only because i had this surgery thread and i didn't have anything to really hold it so if you can find some regular thread that's on a little spool not the big old cone spool that'll be good so here's what the stitches look like um I'm trying to readjust here but that's what it's gonna look like y'all and y'all can see with that space where it didn't catch right there or right there like I had to readjust my stitch with like how how long my stitches was were. So now I'm gonna place it on the sewing machine. So be sure when you placing your tracks on the sewing machine that you are back stitching. When I say back stitching, I mean you are reinforcing that it's on there. So you if you want to go over it two or three or four times, please do that. And that's just for more reinforcement. So you want to kind of get the track a little ahead if you can. Because sometimes I know it'll be stubborn just starting at the tip of the machine. So yeah, yeah, like it's pretty fun actually sewing on the sewing machine. Sewing a wig on the sewing machine. It's fun, y'all. It's just, it just takes some time to get used to. So I'm just going to let y'all look at me sew this on the sewing machine and yeah this is pretty much all that i'm doing y'all like and you cut your tracks at the end now if you don't like cutting your tracks then sewing machine wig making is not for you because you have to cut the tracks and like i said you're gonna reinforce so that's what my stitches look like y'all um the line are just a guide so just be sure to try and keep them close to the line as possible so you can follow along with that um with the cap i know y'all see me kind of smoothing it out i'm not going to stretch it out i'm just smoothing it out so the actual tracks will have a, a good smooth surface to go on to so you don't want to stretch your cap because your wig is going to look all wonky and humped up like just don't do it so the next time I make another video, I'm going to actually show y'all the actual cap that I be using. I got it from AliExpress. It's like $9.99 and it comes with adjustable straps already. So this is my first time doing it on a, a mesh cap and it turned out okay. So yeah, yeah. Just enjoy me making a wig. <laughs>
so this is what it's looking like so far in between that you want to kind of put it on your mannequin head just in case just to see what it looks like just to see how your um wig is gonna lay down so i'm getting close to the top y'all can see that i'm still following my lines and uh, we're gonna close this thing on up and we're gonna get to styling it a little bit so this is you want to kind of take your time because it's going to be a lot of, I can only imagine if you're using curly hair, it's going to be a lot on your machine. So you want to kind of have a good needle. You want to use a regular needle, but you also want to change your needle out like or have some on, hand, on standby just in case, like if you're going to be making this a regular thing. So y'all see, I'm kind of sewing close to my closure, but I'm not going to sew on top of my closure. So I'm sewing close, but not on the closure, if that makes sense. Now we are done making our wig. You want to make sure you cut all those loose threads that were in there. And then this is what the inside of the cap looks like. So, you know y'all have to style it to your liking. I didn't go too hard on plucking for real. So, yeah. I'm just doing some light plucking here, y'all. And just trying to make it look a little more realistic i think what i'm gonna do with this i'm gonna actually do a watercolor method because i want like that burnt orange look so with this hair to cover up that closure i'm just going to take a piece from the back and a piece from the closure and kind of flatten it out to kind of hide the first of all to flatten this closure but just to hide the actual track the actual whiffs on the closure y'all so if that makes sense y'all please uh charge it to my head now my heart ain't this the same <laughs> i'm just trying to help y'all and show y'all what i'll be doing but um yeah just flat out just style your wigs to how you like it y'all because i ended up just putting some curls in here and I, literally i was probably like marilyn monroe or something like that i thought i was for the most part <laughs> So, and also, if y'all gonna get this hair, this hair is by Janet Collection. Um, it looks thin. Like, I would think you would need more than one pack, but one pack will get it done. You just have to style it. Like, you can't wear it like this because it just looks weird. I would say uh, either you're gonna cut it into a style or curl it because it looks hella weird like that. Like, y'all see what I mean? Like, it looks so good curled. Um, the curls probably last maybe a day, not that long. And I didn't put any spray on it, so they could probably could have held a little longer than that. But yeah, y'all, so this is what I'm doing. This is it. So you've made a wig on the sewing machine. And I really hope this video kind of helped y'all a little bit um, on actually making the wigs on the sewing machine. It probably li literally takes me maybe an hour um, non-stop just to make one on the sewing machine as of right now it'll probably take me less if i have things prepped already but having things unprepped is an hour for me so yeah i hope this helped y'all
so I'm just finishing up some curling. I'm just going to throw a picture in here at the end. But I really hope this video helped y'all. And I'll see y'all in my next one. Bye.